Is this Oregon? No, but this is me recreating the video game The Oregon Trail in real life. As it was originally back in the 1800s. I went on a three day journey to see what it would have been like for those actually making the journey and to accurately recreate the video game in real life. Hopefully without any of the dysentery this time. Let's get into it. In the mid-1980s, the modern version of the Oregon Trail was released to the public. It was an educational video game intended for use in schools, simulating the dangerous journeys out west. Since then, the game has received countless remakes, remasters, and ports, being continually popular even in the 21st century. Obviously, the Oregon Trail is based on, well, the Oregon Trail the real-life route that connects Independence, Missouri to Portland, Oregon. From 1836 to 1869, the Oregon Trail hosted over 400,000 people making the journey to the American West Coast. Settlers, miners, missionaries, and pioneers all made the journey across this over 2,000-mile-long expanse of road. Over time, the trail waned in importance, especially with the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. Today, the Oregon Trail is a collection of interstate highways, mostly following I-84 as well as some portions of I-80 and I-70. But I don't want to just walk along some road. I want to experience what the trail was like before the construction of the interstates, back in the mid-1800s. Long walks, real hand carts, and even period-appropriate clothing. And so for this, and the fact that I live in California, closer to the trail's end than its beginning, the entourage that set up this pioneer-style trek has found a different location, but one without any roads, homes, or really any life at all. So I'll need to prepare. Just like players go to Matt's general store in the game for supplies, if I was to go on a modern Oregon trail, I'm definitely going to need to fuel up for the journey. The way we did it was that everyone that went on this trek had to bring everything they needed in five gallon buckets, which definitely constrained things. I'll let past Troy talk about that one. Alright, I got my stuff to pack. I have a Nice big bucket tractor supply. I have a special top on it. We have the box. Or not. I went ahead and order this bad boy. We have three sets of clothes. So this is for you to wear on the first day. Got my snacks. You might want to take them out of the box. Makes sense, yeah. It's only three days, I think we're really overcompensating. In the days before cars or even rail lines this far west, most actual settlers used one of two methods for carrying supplies, covered wagons or hand cart. Covered wagons seem to be the most popular choice, especially on the Oregon Trail specifically, using oxen to pull a large cart carrying supplies. Meanwhile, hand carts were used more in other western trails, using manual power to push a smaller cart. This was most famously used by the Mormon pioneers settling the Salt Lake Valley, but other groups used them as well. Obviously, a covered wagon is the better choice, but we ended up going with hand carts as oxen nowadays. Bruh. 
So we got there, filled up our handcart with what we needed, and they split us into families. Which was actually a cute and period appropriate way of just saying unit. I like that. The only thing was, my family was with the chances. So there were a ton of really corny chance jokes incoming. Oh man, it's full. What are the chances of that? Yeah, cause, cause, cause it's just... Ah, this thing is looking real unstable. But I guess we'll leave that up to chance. Jokes for days, baby, I'm telling you. There's a lot of food in here. Yeah. Gotta make sure you don't become overweight. But I mean, fat chance there, right? Not me. Oh, they did one for me. Chances are you need a massage. I actually kind of do it right now. But after getting through all my corny chance jokes, day one was actually pretty tough. For being the first day, we had to trek through some pretty tough terrain. Not to mention that my feet and body were not used to doing this kind of thing. But still, we had a lot of fun walking through together with just some fun people who all had the same goal. Getting to our base camp. I even got our trail boss on a horse to take a video of us pulling the hand cart. Got dinner. Mmm. Ribs. Time for some food. If you thought day one was hard, day two is grueling. Not only was it the longest distance out of any of the three days, but it had the highest elevation changes and really steep cliffs we had to travel over. It's noteworthy to say, I didn't record much this day because my camera battery was really low and I was already on my second camera battery. I needed to make sure there was some left for Saturday. So, that's really all I have. Overall, I'd say it was a pretty good day. Just really strenuous and really grueling pace-wise. They definitely could have picked a better route. But anyway, the final day of the Oregon Trail. We had leftovers today, which means I got a brisket sandwich at like 8 in the morning. Love that. Day 3 wasn't that hard. On paper. You see, day 3 was the shortest distance of all of them that we had to go, and it was mostly downhill on this one tiny road. But it was harder than most things. It was a pretty long stretch still, and it was pretty grueling out there with very little time for breaks and a very strict window of not going too fast or too slow to get there in pace with everyone else. Still, it worked out fine. Also, it was at this point that I had reckless abandon with the camera battery. I just took clip after clip after clip, pretty much maxing out the battery to the end.
it was a pretty good experience. And if you enjoyed it, maybe slandering Hollywood media companies is in your real house video on the right. Or check out this can of mystery meat YouTube's opened up. It could be anything video on the left. Make sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitch, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.